Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today we're checking out a 2024 Hyundai Palisade all-wheel drive in the calligraphy trim level. This vehicle is sitting on 245-50 hand-cooked tires wrapped around 20-inch alloy wheels with a gloss gray finish. It also has four-wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors in the front and solid rotors in the back. The name of this color is Typhoon Silver, and it looks really good uh, with this metallic front end that we have here. And very impressive. When I first saw it, I was like, wow, that's a really good com color combination because it kind of blends in, but it, you can see there's a striking difference uh, in the color in the grill, uh, but it still blends in. Just kind of shows the contours of the vehicle really nice when it blends in like this. So the, all that grill, it has the gloss black, but it also has like a, it's like an aluminum type look here in the front. It's like a matte aluminum. There's a camera right there under the emblem, right in here. Then there's the radar adaptive cruise control sensor, parking sensors across the front. This vehicle is pretty much loaded. It has the full LED dual projector headlight system. I show I have a full night video, so you can check that out. And it has some accent lights here as well. You see more of that metallic uh, portion extend from here all the way here on the bottom of the door as well. Uh, now the wheel wells, they don't have any kind of black cladding or anything like that. And then we have the, the same metallic handles. And then we have gloss black pillars here, but then you have the body color portion right in there, kind of dividing up the rear glass a little bit. This is what the key looks like, and it's a full proximity key system. And uh, it works fairly well. It's fairly light. Uh, it's not as bulky as like the egg-shaped one. And uh, so it has the lock, unlock, panic button, the ability to open up the power lift gate, uh, remote start, but you also have the ability to move the vehicle in and out. So I'll hit the lock button, then remote start button. Start it up. Now let's use the forward and back buttons here. So we can make the vehicle go forward. You have to stand pretty close to the vehicle. So press and hold that forward button. And first thing it'll do is straighten up the front wheels. If they're crooked at all, it'll straighten them up and then it'll go forward very slowly. And it'll also use the parking sensors to stop the vehicle if it senses something. So as soon as you let go on that button, it stops. If we go in, go in reverse now, we can do that. Now would be a good time to check out the, uh, the tail lights, the brake lights and the reverse lights. You can see the reverse lights there at the bottom and check out that third brake light there at the top. So you notice it's holding the brake while it's easing back. And if there's something in the way, like me, if I stand right here, it's gonna sense me and stop the vehicle. So even though I didn't let go of the button, uh, it sensed something there close to the vehicle and it stopped. Uh, so now the, it's holding the brake and it has the flashers on. And if I go ahead and turn off remote start, it'll put it in park. It'll also engage the rear parking brakes. So this vehicle's designed to where if you have the key in your pocket or in a bag, as long as it's on the outside of the door, you can lock the door by placing your hand or finger over the sensor right here indicated by that little dimple. To unlock it, you simply put your hand behind the handle. There's a sensor back here. As long as the key's on the outside of the door, it'll allow you access to the vehicle. Now there's also a physical key location here, uh, right there. And you will need to take this little cover right here off to access it. And there's a physical key on the inside of the key fob that you can pull out, use it to unlock the door. Uh, just in case the battery's dead or something. Doors go all the way to the bottom of the vehicle and it covers up the threshold completely. There's even a seal down there, it keeps it relatively clean. So the inside, uh, mostly black on this vehicle. You can see it has this gloss black portion with these white lines on it looking pretty good. We have a lot of stitching as well. And then some really nice aluminum 
uh, accents here as well on the speaker grill. And then right in here is kind of like a like a plastic trim, but it kind of looks aluminum. This is all soft touch here, 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 and then the hard touch surfaces at the bottom. Uh, this is enclosed. You can utilize that as a pocket as well. There's the sill plate and the threshold. It has the Palisade name. And then there's the power seat here on the passenger side. Is able to go up and down and tilt and everything, even a two-way lumbar adjustment. Then it has the leather trim seats. has the cloth where it meets up with the hard plastic, which is good. has some gray piping there. And these are heated and vented seats. You can see the perforations and more stitching. Really like this stitching that you'll find in this vehicle. Lots of perforations, and these are very comfortable seats as well. Got lots of leg room here. It's a big storage area with a USB and 12 volt power supply uh, as well. This is a hard touch surface here. Non-locking glove compartment. Smooth plastic on the inside, and it's pretty decent size as well. Nice bright light in there. A little spoiler for the night video. You gotta check out my night video. Soft touch surfaces here, and you have that metal look right here as well. And I like the way they kind of integrate the, the climate control vents uh, all together, kind of blend them in together. And then we have more of that gloss black with the white lines, and then a kind of rubbery soft, non-reflective uh, soft touch dash there. So the Palisade has a lot of room in it. So getting in and out of the front door, no problem. You can go right on in. Uh, the height of the seat is really good off the ground. It's very easy to in it, enter and exit. Swing of the door is nice. Uh, the back door, has the swing of the door is nice. The opening is even almost better. It is actually kind of better than the front, really, because uh, all this is just wide open space. The inside of the door has a shade, a retractable shade. Uh, we have the similar styling, uh, but we have a little bit more stitching going on right here. Have the, the gloss black, a little tiny grill there. Not as fancy of a speaker grill in the door, but it still looks good. Uh, but we do have these cup holders that are in this more forward position right where your hand would be, so that's really convenient. So yeah, really well thought out doors, I think. Have another sill plate there. Now the bucket seats here in the second row. And the uh, the latch system for car seats is right there. You can feel it. It's right there. Easy to get to. Can't really see it that good because it's black. Kind of blends in, but it's right there. And these seats are heated and vented as well, just like the fronts. It has a little armrest there in the center. And these are kind of ratchet. So you, you, they first drop all the way down, and then you lift it up, ratchet it right where you want it, and then you li leave it there. To reset it, you lift it all the way up, and then it'll reset. You can just lift it up out of the way if you want. Pockets on the back of both front seats, and then it has the hard plastic there. It has a little tiny pocket as well as the big pocket. Good for putting like a cell phone or something. Almost flat floor. Separate climate control vents back here with the heated cool seats as well. 12 volt power supply and a power inverter, 115 volt, 150 watts. There's also USB ports here on the sides of each front seat so you can charge stuff. It has like a suede headliner. Headliner it looks pretty cool. And you have two glass roofs. This one's fixed here in the back. The way these seats work, uh, there's actually two buttons, that button and this button, uh, to move the seat to get to the third row. But first I wanna show you the cargo mode. So you lift this up and it flops the seat down. It'll lock in place and it's almost completely flat with the cargo area. But if you wanna enter the third row, you can press this button and it kind of spoons the seat forward like that to the other one. Then that way you can access the third row through here and it has the latch system for car seats on this side but not the other side so just there on the right side place for two passengers realistically <laughs> and then you have a fairly decent amount of leg room back here cup holders uh, there's the ability to recline the seats and heated three stage heated seats in the third row interesting and then USB port there so you can see the controls on this side and cup holders there. So yeah, pretty interesting. Uh, there's also cabin talk 
which has microphones and stuff up here so you can talk to passengers without hollering. <laughs> and of course this folds, these seats fold down to add to your cargo space too. These second row seats also have this little net pocket right there, which is pretty cool. That's, that's a cool little feature. Just to have a little quick access place to put something. Looking at the back here, it has a gloss black shark fin antenna right there in the top center. Uh, there is also a spoiler at the top of the glass uh, with, which we just saw, the brake light integrated in there. Really nice looking. And then the rear view camera uh, that integrates with the rear view mirror is right there. And that's separate from the backup camera, which is located here, which is kind of offset down next to the tag. Not very good. Looks kind of cheesy. Could be a little bit better integrated and in the center of the vehicle, but that's where it is. It does have a rear wiper. Parking sensors back here. They have more of that kind of aluminum looking uh, portions there. It has dual exhaust or two exhaust tips that are next to each other on one side. You do have the ability to have a towing hitch uh, right there as well. Okay, so lifting this up, uh, there's three ways you can do it. One is you can push a button under here. You can use the key, uh, but you can also, in the settings, have it to where you just stand here with the key. It senses it and opens up automatically. I don't really care for that feature, but it does have it. So it's a hard plastic here on the inside. If you have all the seats occupied with passengers, this is how much cargo space you have. And it's pretty decent, it's pretty decent. It's not bad. You can put some stuff back here. You also have a little bit of extra space under here as well. Pretty good amount of space actually. And there's the, there's usually a cover on this jack, um, but so the tools for the spare tire are in this little bag and then there's the jack and the cover's missing for some reason. You see this little plug right here, that is for lowering your spare tire which is located under the vehicle which you probably saw in the beginning of the video there's the subwoofer tie downs you can put a net pocket back here 12 volt power supply uh, you also have the ability to move the seats um, so if we need to move these seats out of the way add to our cargo space uh, we can do it one seat at a time which is really handy for leaving a car seat in place or having a passenger space left over so let's go to the third row. You have the ability to lower and raise the third row. So we'll go ahead and lower this right one. You notice the headrest folds down for you and it comes right on down. If things, things in the way, it'll stop and come back up. Don't ask me how I know that. Okay, so the second row, you can only lower it using these buttons. You have to manually lift it up, okay? So we'll go ahead and do the right one and it just kind of flops down so you got to watch out for kids and stuff like that getting in the way because it does come down kind of hard but you notice we've added a significant amount of extra cargo space here uh, just by pushing those buttons and we can continue to push those buttons and have a really wide open space depending on our needs add to our cargo space and just have a wide open you know cargo area you can almost sleep back here really uh, if you had a mattress um, but yeah really a lot a lot of room back here when you start folding the seats down and it's customizable, of course, as well. So lowering the power lift gate, it's just as simple as pushing a button. And it comes down rather slow, but you still gotta watch out for fingers and stuff. Fuel door is here on the driver's side and it locks with the vehicle. Vehicle's locked, it's locked. We just unlock the vehicle. Now it's unlocked. And it has a traditional cap tether and a place to hang the cap here on the inside of the door. As long as you have the key inside the vehicle to start it up, you just press and hold the brake and press this button. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Floor mat hooks in place, keeping it straight for you. There's the accelerator, brake pedal, nice big footrest as well. Let's take a look under the hood. To open the hood, there's a latch right here, a little bit to the right of center. You move it to the left, lift up. It holds itself up for you, that's nice. So you can see what you're doing right here. Just reach in, move it like that. So there's insulation under the hood. There's also seals around the outer edge of the hood as well. This helps with airflow and noise. Uh, the suspension towers are secured all the way across here. You can see there's a brace hidden right in there. So bracing them together. 
The battery is easy to get to, it does have insulation. Pretty interesting to uh, change the air filter. You just pop that open and pull out the air filter. That's neat. All right, so this is a, um, the way the vehicle is designed is front wheel drive is this way. So you have the, um, the, the V6 position where this is the front of the engine, that's the back and the transmission is located back here. Insulated firewall. Yeah, and also you notice the engine's kind of sunk down, so it lowers the center of gravity as well for a vehicle this size that helps out. The blind spot detection system, uh, it has a little indicator here on the side on the side mirror, actually on the glass, and the glass is a um, auto dim rear side mirror as well. The inside of the driver's door is just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. There's two presets for the power seat. And I like the way these buttons looked, really, really looked good. And you have the lockout for the power windows for kids. And then the power windows themselves are one touch up and down. So even the rear glass, so I can press it, goes all the way down. It goes up and down, goes down quite fast. Up a little bit slower. And there's the front. And it has the uh, laminated glass as well. Door lock controls are here. Side mirrors are adjusted with this little pad. You just pick a side. And the power seat, of course, has to one-up the passenger side. Uh, so you have thigh extension, you have the raise, lower, tilt, all that stuff here. You also have a back massage. Uh, it's actually back and pelvic massage. You can customize it on the screen. Uh, you, it has adjustable bolsters and a four-way lumbar adjustment. So yeah, one-upping the passenger seat once again. But yeah, these are pretty nice seats. To the left of the steering column, there's the dimmer switch to the interior gauges. Tow mode, traction co control off, default is on. Uh, you can open up power lift gate here, and then the electronic parking brake, which engages the rear wheels. Actually, you see a little ambient light there. I'll show that in the night video. There's a tilt and a telescoping steering column as well. The heads up display is fairly well done. Uh, it's nice and clear, it's not blurry in any way. Uh, it also has relevant information, uh, the, the speedometer and all that stuff works well and it shows you the status while you're driving it shows you the status of the lane keep assist system but also when you have the highway driving assist system uh it'll let it'll actually turn the little lines on there and stuff like that and give you little shadows showing where other vehicles around you are while you're driving only works on certain highways uh, but it does have that system not only on the screen here uh, but also on the heads up display, which is kind of neat. Sitting in the driver's seat, I'm six feet tall and I have the seat all the way down, all the way back. And the seat's a little bit high, um, just a tiny bit high. I mean, you would think that it would go a little bit lower. I mean, it's fine for me, but I mean, you know, maybe some people that are super tall or something might want it a little bit lower. Uh, but as far as just op just overall leg room, it's, it's plenty, lots of leg room here. And that high position kind of does feel like a chair. So it's actually pretty comfortable overall. Uh, the steering wheel, uh, it's kind of interesting because the steering wheel is soft in some areas, but it's like kind of uncomfortable in other areas. Like right in here has like this little bit of a sharp edge and I don't know, there's some places are, are good and some places are bad. And also sometimes I like to hold the steering wheel right there, you know, or uh, here with on, on this steering wheel, it's kind of like I'll hold it in the center. Um, but yeah, I don't know this. It's a little bit different than other steering wheel. So it's one of those things you have to get used to it It's not a big deal or anything. It's not bad, but it's just a little bit different has the paddle shifters here on the back here on the right side is the uh, Cruise control and I love the fact that you can just press this one button sets the cruise control It turns it on and sets it at that same time. You can also change to the track the the, the um, Speed here and also you can set it. So once you have it turned on uh, if you hit the brake pedal or whatever, you can reset it by pushing that button here, or you can resume by pressing in on that button. You can pause or resume by pressing in on that little toggle. Sometimes it's hard to see those buttons, but hopefully you can see them there. Uh, this is the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. Lane keep assist system, which is hit or miss. Sometimes it works good, sometimes it's like pulling you all over the road. Uh, and then it has this pages button and this okay and this, this right here, this little up and down. I'm gonna go over that. that, that corresponds with the screen. We'll get to that in a second. Here on the left side is the volume for the radio. 
change to the tracks on the radio. Mode is the audio source. Voice recognition button. This is to answer or hang up on calls. And then this is a uh, button that you can set up to do certain things, whatever you, whatever you really want to do with it. And you set it up on the screen over here. Windshield wiper controls are here on the right side, front and rear. It also has rain sensing uh, windshield wiper, so you can set it to auto and it'll turn on the headlight, the, the windshield wipers when it's appropriate, when they get wet, basically, when the windshield gets wet. Uh, turn signals over here. We also have the headlights switch. And I like the way it shows on the screen what, what you're doing. Uh, it does have the automatic function and the automatic high beams as well, which do not work well on this vehicle. Okay, so on this particular, maybe your vehicle might be different, but this one doesn't work well. Um, so here is the screen, and it has this kind of traditional dial look, which you can change the way it looks. Uh, but uh, right now I'm showing the speedometer here on the left side, and the tachometer there, engine cooling temperature, fuel gauge over here, and you can see it needs fuel, distance to empty is 36 miles. And then outside temperature and average fuel economy, 22 miles per gallon, yeah, I guess so. Uh, and then in the center, you have diff additional information here, which this is where you can press this button right here. So this, this button, or sorry, this button and these buttons here. So the pages, I'm gonna refer to that one as the pages button. And this one is the little toggle with the okay when you press in. So if I hit the praise, uh, pages button, you can see it cycles through. It gives me a digital speedometer. Uh, right now it's showing a digital compass, but if you have a route set in the, climb, in the uh, navigation, it'll pop up there, additional information. And then the tire pressure can show here. As you can see, it's part of a menu system. As I scroll through, it gives you little icons. So I'm just pressing the pages button. It's going to the next page. So you notice that this screen has these little bubbles here on the right side. So we can scroll up and down uh, within this page and get more information. Some of them doesn't have that. This one does. So we got different information. This is showing uh, besides the tire pressure, which is not gonna display right now, this one shows how much energy or how much uh, power is going to the front and rear wheels. So since it has the all-wheel drive system, even though it's set up as a front-wheel drive vehicle, like I mentioned, uh, with the engine, it is an all-wheel drive system, and it's able to, you know, put deliver power to the rear wheels. And this gives you like a visual reference to how much power is going where. And it also, of course, it depends on your your drive mode and all that stuff. But yeah, right in here, digital speedometer is uh, perfect. But you also have the heads-up display as well. So even if you don't have it displayed here, you have it up up above. In the setup here on the screen, we can go to the cluster uh, the, and, and change the cluster theme selection. So first of all, the first one is the cube. So kind of odd looking, gives us cubes with numbers in it. Uh, you also have um, the classic theme and you have A, B, and C, and you can link these to the drive, drive modes. Uh, but there's A, there's B, and there's C. So A is kind of like a normal, B is kind of like a sport mode, C is kind of like an eco mode. So if you link it to drive mode, that's what you'll get. Uh, I like C because A is a little bit bright at nighttime, these bright dials. Uh, B looks really cool, um, but it just reminds me of sport mode too much. So C is kind of like a, not too bright, but it looks good and it's, it's a nice, um, not bright and it still looks good. It doesn't like look too, overly like you're gonna at, or driving in a race car or anything. So this is the 2024 model, but it doesn't have the new system that some of the other Hyundais have, uh, but it still works really good. It has this main screen here, which you can see the little navigation map blend again. It has the di digital clock, also a calendar, shows the status of the radio, um, and outside temperature, different information there. When you slide over from the home screen, you actually have three different screens here, here, and here. And it basically has icons, so like what you see on your cell phone or whatever. You can also customize this menu. So uh, let's say you want to go over here and change, take the setup and move it. Well, you press that, and then you can press and hold the one you want, and then you can move it around and put it where you want to put it. So that's pretty cool. You can also reset it if you want. 
So yeah, I just kind of reorders the little icons here. Let's look at the map here. Media. Look at the satellite radio system here. Uh, it has album art and uh, the ability to you know, have presets here on the left side. You can kind of scroll through. You can also have a number pad here uh, in direct tune. So if you want to go channel eight, go there, that kind of thing. Navigation menus where you can look up different addresses. And of course your setup there for setting up the vehicle. Then your climate control can be uh, shown here on the screen as well. Just pretty handy. But yeah, pretty good system. I like it. It's easy to use. It's big. And I wish this helps out with the camera system as well, which I'll show you that in a second. Below that is the volume for the radio, change to the tracks. Now these are redundant physical buttons that, that makes it easy to go to quickly, uh, to quickly go to different places on the screen here. Temperature, the, the climate controls down here, there's a little touch screen here as well. So you have the driver, passenger, you can also control the rear climate control. Uh, and you know, it's pretty straightforward where you want the air to blow. Fan speed. And there's your temperatures. And then of course you can sync both temperatures or all the temperatures basically uh, using that button. You have the front and rear defrosters, recirculate the air, turn the climate control off. Also the, uh, the automatic function has three different settings, low, medium, and high. So sometimes you just want to have it automatic, but you don't want it blasting air, so you can have it on low. If you want it blasting air, you can put it up to the high. You know, it kind of forces it to do certain things. And of course, you can take control manually if you want. So right in here is the parking sensors. You can turn those on or off. Uh, stop start feature, you can turn off. Default is on. Here's the camera system. So press that button. Pops up this really good camera system. And uh, so right now it's showing the top down view, it has four cameras and it stitches all those views together and gives you this uh, view around the vehicle. Right now it's showing behind the vehicle um, and you can get different views top down if you're backing up to a trailer, the wide view we saw, or the side of the vehicle. So those are the rear wheels and we're looking down the side of the vehicle like so. Now, if we put it in drive, we're gonna have the front view. And when we're in the front view, we can see the top down, the front, or the top, the front wheels. So we can actually look at the front wheels. So as I turn the wheel, uh, you can see them popping out there. Uh, we can see right where we are in relationship to other things. And basically it just cuts out the car in the middle so we can focus there on the ends. We can also hit this button. It's kind of neat because it gives you like a render of what the vehicle looks like and you can kind of look around and your surroundings are actually real um, using the cameras. So if you want to look around and see what's around you, you can do that as well. Including the top down. But we can always switch back if we want to. And those have the active guidelines so you can see where you're going, uh, where you're, the exterior of the vehicle is going to go uh, as you turn the steering wheel. So yeah, the camera system is great. So if you're in drive, and if you're not in drive or reverse, you can always hit that button and pull up the camera system, which is really handy when you're you know, pulling into a parking spot or something like that, and you just wanna make sure that you're good, that you can press that button and, and pull it up. Uh, so there is the shifter, and it doesn't have like a big shift lever to get in the way. Uh, so it's just buttons. So you just hit the drive button, you're in drive. Neutral, you're in neutral. Reverse, you're in reverse. To put it in park, hit the park button. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, so it's not a uh, not complicated. It's electronic anyway, whether you have a big old shift knob or not. Uh, so might as well keep it simple, I guess. Okay, so this is the heat, the cooled seats, three stage, heated seats, three stage, single stage on and off, on or off heated steering wheel, and then of course you have the heated and cooled seats for the passenger side. The auto hold button that is to hold, when you turn that on, it basically just holds the brake for you when you come to a complete stop. So if you're sitting at a stoplight or whatever, you don't have to hold the brake. Um, so it's one of those things if you want to use it. Uh, this is pretty neat. When you close this, it's like a little writing pad. You have a nice place to 
you know, make a note or whatever, and it's a nice surface uh, for that. You know, it's kind of like, not like, it's made to kind of as a writing pad, really. And then you press that button, and it kind of spring loads itself open. And speaking of that, you actually have these little spring-loaded cup holders as well, which is kind of neat. So you can get them out of the way if you want to utilize this space for other things besides cups. But if you want to use cup holders, you can pop them out and use them. And they have little spring-loaded arms here as well. There's a USB port. And there's also a wireless charger here. It kind of extends up in there. So, I don't know if you can see that, but if I put my cell phone in there, usually it'll charge with this case on. Sometimes it won't. Uh, Alright, so it's charging now. Uh, so yeah, this is actually pretty good. It kind of gets it out of the way. Now, not, your phone's not going to get, like if you listen to a podcast or something, it's not going to get very good signal in there if, if there's a weak signal to begin with. Uh, so that's something to consider. And this is rubberized as well. So here's our armrest. Uh, probably not big enough to show it to passenger. It's kind of rubbery soft, not super cushy. Uh, but it releases here, this little lever right here. And it's kind of spring-loaded, so it doesn't slap back down on you. There it is. And it has this little this little tray right here. Got some napkins in the way. Little quick access tray. You can put some stuff in there if you want. And then there's a wide open spot in here. And I got my business cards down in there. Let me get those out of the way. Um, so yeah, 12 volt power supply, USB port in there as well. Uh, so can't really see in there. Let me adjust the camera here. There we go. Now you'll be able to see. Yep, 12 volt power supply and USB port. And that is a USB C port. And unfortunately, there's no light in this compartment. You can change through the drive modes here. And I have it turned off to where it, the, the views on the screen are not linked to the drive mode. So if I put it in different, like if I put it in sport mode, it's not going to show that sport screen right now. Uh, but you can have it linked. But it will show you what drive mode you're in right to here, where it says sport. It also illuminates here on this dial as well. Uh, so you have comfort, which is the normal mode. Sport, which is more emphasized performance over fuel economy. Not a huge difference that I can tell. Uh, and then smart mode is supposedly going to change based on your driving behavior. Uh, eco is going to try to cut things back to give you the best fuel economy possible, really. Um, but, you know, it, it is going to take a hit on not only your acceleration and stuff like that, but also some of your climate control as well. And then you have a snow mode, which is intended for snow and slippery surfaces, basically. Um, you also have the ability to lock the center differential. Uh, so if you're doing some off-roading, you know, you're definitely going to be uh, needing that off-road capability of the all-wheel drive system, uh, then you can lock that, which will give you more of a, um, more traction, basically. You know, it, it, you're telling the vehicle that, hey, you know, we're off-road, and, uh, you know, in addition to the to the drive mode, you have the ability to lock the center differential and, and take adva full advantage of the all-wheel drive system in that sense. So the rearview mirror is also a rearview camera. So you got the mirror part, which is auto dimming, and then you got the camera portion, which is actually auto dimming too, because I got the shade over the light sensor, so it thinks it's dark. Uh, but you do have the ability to adjust the brightness and the uh, the angle of the of the camera as well. So you can increase and lower the brightness, or you can change the angle. Home link garage door opener controls are here as well. Up here we have some interior lights we can turn on or we can have individual reading lights here. All these lights are backlit, which is nice. And then you can have them turn on with the door using that button. This is for the sunroof. Uh, now this is the rear shade. This is the sunroof here. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, the headliner is a suede, sim simulated suede material. Same thing with the visor, has that same suede material. Has a little clip here, mirror, light. These extend out. Same thing basically on the other side. 
Okay, so that glass back there, you see that glass? Well, you got the you got the sunroof here, and then you got that glass back there. And so the separate button is to open and close that rear shade back there. So we'll go ahead and close it. And so you can see it covers 100% of the light. Here in the front, you can use the, uh, the switch to vent it, or you can open it. Press it again. Okay, that's as far back as it goes. And of course you can close the shade. And once again, it blocks 100% of the light. And it has that simulated uh, suede material up here as well. Looking at the visibility, so I have some seats down, some seats up. And you can see how the seats kind of impede your visibility a little bit. Uh, but also you have those pillars there. But overall, I mean, it's pretty good. I mean, you have lots of windows and you can see pretty good. Of course, it has the camera system, blind spot detection system, parking sensors, rear cross traffic alert. Uh, just a lot of the, a lot of features, technology to help you drive the vehicle safely uh, regarding that. But, you know, as far as visibility, I hadn't had any issues whatsoever. Uh, I mean, I'm leaning heavily on the, the, sen the sensors and the camera system, though. Let's start off in comfort mode and see how it accelerates. So now let's try sport mode acceleration. When you're just cruising along and you have the cruise control on and you have the lane keep assist system, sometimes it works well, uh, sometimes it fights with you. It's kind of weird. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what's causing that. but. Um, so right now, it seems to be working fine. And the the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you, when you adjust it, uh, it's a little bit close on the lowest setting, which is number one. But when you have it on three or four, it's fine. And also it'll vary depending on how fast you're going. Most, it's relatively quiet. Unless you're accelerating fast or something like that, you don't hear the engine, uh, there's, not a lot of road noise depending on you know how rough the road is that you're driving on uh, but exterior noise are kept out pretty good and road noise is is fairly decent and the engine noise is is nice and quiet uh, unless you're revving the engine and then you'll hear it <laughs> I really like the blind spot cameras. So when you put the turn signal on, it'll show you the view right there in your blind spot uh, on either side here on the on the dash. But it's handy for changing lanes, but also if you're making a turn, especially if there's like a curve there and you're trying to avoid it, uh, this kind of sticking out, you can kind of you get a, a view right on that line, right where your vehicle is uh, next to you. So as you turn, you can see right where you're at in relationship to other things. So yeah, these cameras are really good. These blind spot cameras, in addition to the regular cameras that that's here. This vehicle stays relatively flat for a big three-row SUV type vehicle. It stays relatively flat in the cornering. It's not a lot of leaning or anything. Feels good, feels tight. Uh, braking is really good too, so I can really stop fast without, you know, being all dramatic about it. You know, like the vehicle's not like flipping out, trying to slow down. 